this is a Sony FX3. Well, uh, this is a box, but it's a box for a Sony FX3. And I know what you're saying to yourself. Hey, Chris, you always shoot on Fujifilm. What's going on? Let me tell you. What's up? My name is Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Ontario, Canada, and I had a very interesting day, and I want to tell you the story of my day. In, in order to properly tell you the story of my day, though, we have to go back. Uh, we have to go back to last Tuesday and a message I got from my friend Clayton. Clayton I met a little while ago at the Canada Photo Summit, and he sent me this message. Hey, Chris, I know you're not right in Toronto, but I know someone who's looking for some doc coverage this Sunday for a doc on adopting street dogs from India. I remember you saying you do some video work as well. So if you're interested and if you're available, I can get you in touch with the director. So I looked at the email and a couple things immediately jumped out at me. First of all, Sunday. Sundays are the day that I normally keep free for myself and my partner to have a day together. Secondly, this had to be shot on a Sony FX3 because it was being considered for Netflix. I don't own a Sony FX3, which is where this box comes into play, right? Third, the budget was $300 for the cinematographer for the day. That's not enough. So I was going to say no, but then I remembered, I know someone way smarter than me who I can just ask their opinion on this. So I went to my partner and I said, Hey, I've got this thing that I could do on Sunday. It's a documentary. It's for this director based out of Maryland who is currently in India and doing this documentary all about the street dogs of India. It would be on Sunday. It wouldn't pay a ton. And I think I would have to leave at like 3.30 in the morning in order to get there on time. She patiently sat and listened to the whole idea. I read her the email and, and she said, do you think you want to do it? And I sat with that for a minute and I thought about it and I realized, yeah, you know what? I think I do want to do it. It sounds cool. I want to say yes to this. So I said, yes, I got in touch with the director. We looked at the shot list. We talked a little bit about what they were hoping to capture. I found a place to rent the Sony FX3 and we did the shoot today. What I didn't know at the time was that this director is incredible, super kind, super professional, won a ton of awards and is making something really impactful and has always made really impactful stuff. So you might hear from people that you should never do free work, or you might hear from people that you should definitely do free work. People are on both sides of the camp. But for me, what I try and do is just look at the situation and say to myself, is this something I want to do? And if everything lines up and it feels right, I'm going to do it. Sometimes I think there's value in just saying yes to the things you want to do and figuring it out from there. Let me tell you another story. This also happened recently. I get a message from somebody named Christy. I know Christy from the running community. Uh, I'm really close in the running community that I live in. And so is she. So she messaged me and she said, Hey, I'm running this ultra marathon and I want to get some training videos made. It's the kind of thing I do for people. We make reels, we make training videos, that kind of stuff. Pretty straightforward. She told me she didn't have a big budget for it, but the budget she did have came from donations and she wanted to put that towards this. Then I found out that the reason she was getting donations is because Christy is a living organ donor. Yeah, she's doing an ultra marathon with one kidney. And then I found out it's not just an ultra marathon, it's a 200 mile race. That's really cool. That got my brain spinning and that made me really excited. She came to me with the idea of training videos. I came to her with a 30 minute documentary. To me, I thought this is way too cool. You're so badass. You're doing something amazing. We need to blow this up. We need to turn this into something big. But I knew when I was pitching her on this, I needed to come up with an idea of what I wanted to create, the budget it was going to take to do it, the timeline and what my vision was really going to be. Because if this is going to be something that I'm going to do for less than my normal rate, it has to be something that brings value to me, right? Yes, of course, the story brings value to me. I think it's amazing. And, and yes, I want to capture this. But I also know that if I do it in the way I want to do it, and if we create something really special, it's something I can add to my reel. It's something I can pitch to other people. And it's something that could really have legs. That doesn't always happen. It's not always like that. People aren't always going to be stoked on the first idea that you present them with. This was lucky. But what I knew is that now that I got lucky, I really needed to put in the work. And that's where we're at now. We're starting this project now. It's going to take us five months and we're going to make something really, really special. The reason I'm telling you these two stories is because I think they both illustrate a really interesting point. Both of these inquiries came to me. I didn't go pitch them, but in both cases, I was met with the opportunity to either say yes and expand my vision or say no and walk away. In the case of the first story, expanding my vision meant looking outside of pay 
It meant looking at gear I had never used. It meant feeling comfortable being in a position I hadn't really been in much before. In the second story, expanding my vision really just meant broadening the idea of what was brought to me and presenting it, knowing that I might be shut down. In both of these instances, I'm being pushed to the edge of my comfort zone. I've never worked with an award-winning director, and I've never made a 30-minute documentary entirely on my own, from pitch to delivery. Both of these feel scary and feel uncomfortable, and I freak out when I think about it too much. Even in the first story, that documentary, we, we, we shot today, and it went, it went well. I'm happy with what we did, and it's all good. Last night, I was freaking out. I couldn't fall asleep. I was worried I was going to show up and have forgotten the gear. I had that dream, you know, where you like are halfway there and then you've forgotten everything and you have to go back and you're not going to have time. And then all of a sudden they couldn't go and meet their dog and the dog got left there in customs and he was there forever and everything was terrible. That was my dream. It freaked me out. Then I woke up and I went and I tried to get the work done. I'm terrified of this idea of the documentary. I, I, I don't I don't know how it's going to go. I've never shot an ultra marathon documentary before. I. I don't know what to expect. I'm at the edge of my comfort zone and I'm going to be at the edge of my comfort zone for a long time because I'm going to keep saying yes to these things that feel uncomfortable, but I know are going to get me further and I know are going to be the kinds of things I want to do. Because ultimately, I think the most meaningful growth comes from the times you say yes when you're not ready. When you think to yourself, this isn't me. I don't think I can do this. When you have that self-doubt, when you're uncomfortable, that's when you grow. And that's where some of those meaningful work is going to come from. So there's this incredible speaker I heard a few months ago. Her name's Christine. I'll, I'll link her socials down below. And she told me that essentially what she does is she helps people find their superpower and pursue it. I think that's incredible and beautiful and powerful and, and, it, and is such a big service to give to this world. And it really got me thinking like, okay, if I'm going to say yes to something that I might not feel like I am 100% ready for, then I have to over deliver on the things I know I'm great at. For me, I can put people at ease. I can feel comfortable in situations and make other people feel comfortable too. I'm okay with people being vulnerable around me. I'm okay with emotion. I'm okay with holding that space. So in a case where a family's gonna meet a dog that they've been waiting to meet for months, this dog that they saved from across the world, I can be there in that moment and I can honestly represent what's happening and make them feel comfortable enough to express that emotion. Or when we're 160 miles into a 200 mile race and the wheels are falling off and we don't know what to do, I know that I can hold space there for Christy and I know that we can create something vulnerable and beautiful and engaging and I know that I can bring that to that documentary. So I figure out what I'm really great at and I over deliver on that. I might not know how to use every single setting in the Sony FX3 and I might not know how to compose the perfect shot for a sports documentary, but I do know how to be present with people and I do know how to be honest and open and vulnerable with them. And if they can do that with me too, while I'm behind a camera, we're going to get something incredibly special. Okay, so that's a couple quick stories for you. Just some things that have been on my mind, some things I'm working through and I hope that makes you feel inspired to go out and try and get the kind of work you want to get. Yes, both of these things came to me and you might be saying to yourself like, Chris, I, I don't have people coming to me to give me work. Well, a year ago, neither did I. La this time last year, I didn't have anybody knocking at my door trying to get me to do work for them. Occasionally things would come in and, and, and I would take them because I had to. Now I'm slowly, so slowly starting to build out a consistent basis of work because I'm putting myself out there, I'm saying yes to things that I think are going to be special, and I'm trying to make great work. So if you're in that same space where you're like, I don't know if I can do this, I'm worried, I don't know what kind of work I'm going to get, just keep putting yourself out there, keep saying yes to interesting work, and keep trying to expand your vision. Hope that makes you feel excited and I hope you make something really cool. I hope it's rad and I hope you share it with me. Send me a link so I can watch it because I want to be inspired by the things that you're doing. And to all the people who have subscribed over this last couple weeks as I started making videos, thank you so much. It's so cool to see. Truly, I, I can't believe that people have been embracing it and people have been appreciating it. I see the comments and the likes and, and, and it's amazing. And so thank you so much. We'll leave it there. I have to go return the Sony FX3, which by the way, this is the Sony FX3. Um, you, you, I don't know how different it's going to look because uh, I haven't edited it yet, but uh, Sony FX3, Fujifilm X-H2S. We got the 24-70 to G Master and we got the Tamron 17-70 to 
maybe one looks better than the other probably one looks better to you and one looks better to somebody else but um that's it we're gonna go return this and thank you so much peace Thank you.